like I'm falling. Seriously falling hard for you. Oh, forever's a long time. But far from enough time to spend with you. I will always be there. I will always be there. So far, I'll be behind you. I'll be there to guide you when you've lost your way. Forever's a long time, but far from enough time to spend with you. I will always be there. I will always be there. So go and call your parents. Tell them the good news. Say you've fallen hard, and there's someone that needs to meet you. We'll pick out a white dress and grab two golden bands. The world will stare in jealousy 'cause they don't understand like you. So blessed to have the full support from both families here today, especially the Lord. But before we begin, I must ask, who gives Catherine to be married to Travis here today? Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for tonight that Travis and Catherine were to come together to become one flesh. We ask that you would be glorified in this ceremony. We ask that you would be honored. We ask that we'd have a great time in your name, that we'd be safe and protected. And Lord, this is one day. This is an important day. But marriage is a lifetime. And we ask that their marriage would reflect who you are throughout their life together. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You guys look great. We are gathered here in the presence of God to join Travis and Catherine in holy marriage according to the plan of God. God says this about marriage. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And on behalf of both families, we thank you so very much for coming out to celebrate such a joyous occasion. I know this is a day that they've both been anticipating for a very long time. It is their desire that through this ceremony, God will be glorified. You will be witnesses as they pledge their love and lives to each other, and I trust that you will be blessed. The commitment of marriage is not to be entered into lightly or carelessly, but rather thoughtfully prayerfully, and the fear of the Lord. It is this commitment that Travis and Catherine now desire to enter. With that being said, let us allow Travis and Catherine to declare their intent of marriage to one another. But first, a word from the Lord. The Word of God teaches that we are to build our foundation upon the rock. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says this, 
Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded upon that rock. And everyone then who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it did fall and great was the fall of it. In this passage, who is the rock? Well, in this passage, the rock is Christ. The one that is built on this foundation will stand and it will not fall. What do I mean by this? Well, there's no name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that name again is Jesus Christ. Well, saved from what? Saved from our sin. Saved from God's wrath to come. Saved from eternal separation from God. Because see, as humans, we are totally depraved. We're corrupt. And we cannot get to God on our own, in our own strength, in our own works. Because Ephesians 2 reminds us that for by grace, you have been saved by faith. It's not anything that we've done, so we can't earn our way to God, but rather it's a free gift that he offers. Because see, God hates sin because it separates us from him. Because all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard. The scriptures teach that not some or even most have fallen short, but all have sinned and fallen short of God. And so Romans 6.23 also reminds us that the wages of sin is death. That's the separation from God for eternity. But while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us because he loves you that much. He wouldn't want to see an eternal separation for you. And he made a way for you. He laid down his life willingly because he loves you. So Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you're sitting here today and you know that perhaps you didn't make that decision for yourself and perhaps there is a separation between you and God, let not today pass without you knowing that you know that you know that you have a relationship with God the Father. And he offers his son as a sacrifice and dying in your place so that you can be forgiven. Travis, do you believe that? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone? I have. And Kath, Catherine, have you done the same? I have. That's great. Back to Matthew 7, 24. It is of no use to build your foundation elsewhere other than the rock, which is Christ. So some of you here may build your lives upon your looks. You guys have a very good-looking family. Maybe it's their strength and their health. Well, maybe if I take care of myself and go to the gym, or maybe it's their finances. Maybe it's their family and their friends. Listen, loved ones, these are all great things. But if this is all that you're building your foundation upon, it will not last. It will fall. So you will not be able to build a marriage unless it is founded upon the rock, which is Christ. So if there's any marital wisdom to share with you, it's this. To live a life in obedience unto the Father. Because faith is believing in the word of God and acting upon it no matter how I feel, knowing that God promises a good result. And so love is a choice. There is an emotion to it. There is a feeling that comes with it. But it starts with a choice, an act of obedience. Because Travis, what God says to you in Ephesians 5 is he actually commands that you are to love your wife as Christ loves the church. And how did he love the church? Well, it was unconditional. No matter what, it's not based on her conditions. It's unconditional, and it's also faithful. It's unmovable, steadfast, and it will be forever. And then also sacrificial. As I mentioned, Christ laid down his life for the church. In the same way, Travis, you're called to lay down your life for your bride-to-be. And then Catherine, you're commanded to submit to your husband and to respect him. I know that's not going to be an easy task, but it's what the Lord has for you. And remember, you can't go wrong when you obey the Lord. So it's not, it's not Travis that you're going to be rendering yourself to, but it's the word of God. And so again, not based on your feelings, because Travis, some mornings you wake up, you're not going to feel the love for your bride. But again, it's based on a commandment. But in that time that we got a chance to know each other, it was a great time. Uh, we did a lot of premarital sessions together, got a chance to know you guys both quite well, and I enjoyed it. Got a chance to know you guys. And Travis, I got to say, I was really encouraged by you and how you led Catherine. 
and how you're so attentive. You never took your eyes off of me, not in a creepy way, <laughs> but in a way that he really wanted to own this. He took it on because he really loves the Lord and he loves his bride-to-be. And this is very important to him and quite humble, very teachable, always listen, very attentive, and quite respectful, very much respectful. And Catherine, you're a bit quiet at first, but once you got out of your shell, you're quite funny and uh, quite teachable as well. And I can tell that you just wanted to learn. And uh, Travis, you got to know this from brother to brother, uh, is that you are marrying up. But uh, Catherine, I got to say, you're not doing so bad yourself because you're marrying one of the Jonas Brothers here. <laughs> so I end up with saying this. When you do the things that love does, you'll feel the things that love feels. And I just want you guys to know from me that my wife and I are always going to be available to you. Whenever there's a hiccup in the marriage, I know that you have family and friends here to support you, but we want to be readily available anytime. Shoot me a text or give me a call. And we'll be there for you guys. So now the declaration of intent. Travis, as Christ is to his body, the church, will you be to Catherine a faithful and sacrificial husband, promising your deepest love, your unselfish devotion, and your most tender care? I will. And Catherine, with confidence, will you submit yourself to Travis's headship as unto the Lord, Promising him your deepest love, your unselfish devotion, and your most tender care? I will. Since it's your desire to take each other as husband and wife, please repeat after me before God and these witnesses your marriage vows. Travis, repeat after me. I, Travis, take you, Catherine. I, Travis, take you, Catherine. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For rich or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. Catherine P. after me. I, Catherine, take you, Travis. I, Catherine, take you, Travis. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. And to you I pledge my faithfulness. Well, Travis and Catherine, you have come here as two separate people. But now in the act of marriage, God has joined you together in a new life that is more than your lives were separately. The two candles represent the personality and interests that each of you bring into the marriage. The new lit candle symbolizes your new life together. As an expression of your oneness, will you together light the new candle as a benediction to your vows here today? He promised, like he said on that day. There's never been a sweeter love I've known. When I left him, he never left me alone. Nothing can separate. You're good in a God who's got me Who's got me okay. Remembering Matthew 18 verse 20 For where two or three are gathered together in my name There am I in the midst of them On the threshold of his public ministry Jesus performed his first miracle at the request of his mother Mary. 
at the wedding at Cana by turning water into wine. The first act of his public ministry was a sign of the goodness of Mary, and that marriage is a definite sign of Christ's presence. It is by renouncing yourselves as individuals and by taking up your crosses as man and wife that spouses receive the original message of marriage and live in it with the help of Christ. With the Holy Family as your model, may you face your eternal life together with love, honor, and respect. We ask for the prayerful intercession of Saints Mary, Joseph, Therese, Catherine, Eric, Peter, Patrick, and Michael on this blessed path you both have chosen to begin together. May Christ watch over you and your children. May he protect you, and may he be the constant strength in your journey as one. Father, I just want to lift up Travis and Catherine to you and just thank you for this special day. I just pray that you will unite them as one and uh, just pray that we will just be there for them in times of need, but just let them lean on each other and especially lean on you for any troubles that they may encounter and just to know that you are with them, Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful woman that you've blessed me with and her family. God, you are awesome. And you brought us together today because it's your will. And I just pray that you'd be with this marriage and that I would be the strong spiritual leader that I need to be for Kat and for our family. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ruth 1.16 says, Where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if, any, if anything but death parts me from you. And now the exchange of rings. What tokens do you give to seal the pledge that you have made to each other here today? Catherine, will you receive this ring from Travis as a token of his affection, sincerity, and faithfulness towards you, and will you wear it as a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and faithfulness towards him? I will. Travis, place this ring on Catherine's finger and repeat after me. Catherine, I give you this ring. Catherine, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my lifelong pledge. As a symbol of my lifelong pledge. Of constant faithfulness. Of constant faithfulness. And abiding love. And abiding love. Travis, will you receive this ring from Catherine as a token of her affection, sincerity, and faithfulness towards you? And will you wear it as a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and faithfulness towards her? I will. Catherine, place this ring on Travis's finger. Repeat after me. Travis, I give you this ring. Travis, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my lifelong pledge. As a symbol of my lifelong pledge. Of constant faithfulness. Of constant faithfulness. And abiding love. And abiding love. For as much as Travis and Catherine have made a covenant together in Christian marriage, according to the teachings of the scripture and the laws of this state, I, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, declare that you are now husband and wife. In the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Travis, you may kiss your bride. Family and friends, it's my great honor and privilege to present for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Travis and Catherine Schreiber.